It's now been almost five months since the syringe exchange program sponsored by the Madison County Health Department has started here in Madison County in Richmond and Berea, but some changes are coming soon to make the program more accessible to users. It's cold, it's snowy, and guess what? You do not need to be on your roof. Call Unlimited Roofing and they'll give you a totally free roof inspection for winter storm, hail, and wind damage. Call Tim Patrick or Danny Netter. Now bundle up. Soon, the church behind me and Elizabeth Missionary Baptist Church on Elm Street in Richmond will be hosting the syringe exchange program every other Tuesday. We spoke to a member of the church and Jim Thacker of the health department to get more information on how this came to be. One of our members is associated with the health department and she brought the ideal to us and presented it to the congregation and we felt it was something that we could offer, that we could help out. Feedback was good. We have some members in the congregation who actually have members who are, are involved in drugs. So they're looking for ways to help and it's not always, it's kind of hard to help sometimes directly. So you go around and you help two other ways. Just about every family in the county, in the world is touched by drugs in some shape or form, You're either a victim, a family member, or, or you, you know, you've seen it take place right in front of you. Jim Thacker of the Health Department also gave us an update on the syringe exchange program in the months since it started and said that he's actually seen a few of the clients successfully go and attend treatment. Uh, we're expanding what we're offering as far as the syringe exchange program goes. Uh, we're always at the Health Department on Boggs Lane uh, on Mondays from 3 to 6 and at the Berea Health Department uh, on Thursdays from 1 to 4. However, we want to take the program out into the communities and make it easier for residents to uh, get to the program. On Tuesday, January the 30th, we're going to be on Elm Street in Richmond at Elizabeth Missionary Baptist. We'll be there from 6.30 to 8.30. And then the following Tuesday, we'll begin on Big Hill at Revival Tabernacle. That's February the 6th. We'll be there from 6.30 to 8.30 in the church. And what we will do on Tuesdays is alternate between those two locations. The program is growing, uh, but it's growing slowly. And that's historically, that's typical for syringe exchange programs. Uh, from talking to our clients, our participants in, in the program, one of the, th the things that we're still really fighting is this idea uh, that it's a setup, that they're going to show up uh, to the syringe exchange and there are going to be police officers there to arrest them. So there, there's that fear and, and what we're working on is getting word out to combat that, to say that law enforcement supports this program uh, because it, it makes things safer for the officers, uh, it makes things safer for EMS, and they really want this program to succeed so they don't hang around where we're having the sites. Uh, they're, they're aware of them and they, and they make an effort not to be there because they want this program to succeed because it makes it safer for their officers. Um, we have had um, some real success with the program. Uh, some of our very first participants have actually entered recovery programs. Um, and our, our goal, our stated goal and, and is always harm reduction to make sure uh, people don't get sick, that they don't pick up hepatitis C or hepatitis B or HIV, um, and that we can reduce the, the uh, likelihood that they'll pick those diseases up and that they'll come in and get tested if, if they've been using for a while and they haven't been tested so that if they are positive for any of those, they can start treatment. Um, but the folks going into recovery is sort of the gravy of the program, uh, that you see people going in and, and um, trying to get clean and, and sort of restart their lives. And we always provide referrals for them to do that as part of the program. So we're really happy about the fact that we've had several people who appear to be on their way. Although the program is growing a little slowly over the past few months, Jim Thacker says it is important to get this harm reduction out to intravenous drug users. For WBON-TV here in Richmond, I'm Marissa Hempel.